There is a new GPU topping the Steam charts. This is it. The GPU of the people. It's the new, most popular GPU in the world. There's a good chance that you have this GPU right now. And today we're going to talk about why it's so popular and we'll see what sort of gaming experience the, the people are getting. But first... Are you tired of that annoying activate Windows message? Quietly judging you and your life choices from the corner of your screen? Why not freaking do something about it and order a genuine Windows 10 key from SCD key? Just go over to the Windows 10 Pro page on SCD key and add it to your cart. And get this. Get this, you guys. You can use my special super secret promo code DWEEB to save 25 freaking percent. And then you can use the key to activate your copy of Windows. And then th th that's it. You're done. You're, you're good to go. Oh, and once you're activated, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you're into that sort of thing. Can you freaking believe it? No. No, you can't. Hello, hi, I'm TechSweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. Uh, the Steam Hardware Survey is an amazing tool because it gives us a glimpse into what people who play games are actually using to play those games. This survey represents what the average jerk is gaming on. And it's always fascinating to see what, what hardware is coming out on top. Uh, for the last while, the, the last few years actually, the, the GTX 1060 held the top spot. It held that spot for a long time. I, I think every YouTuber under the sun made a, a gaming on Steam's most popular GPU video. <laughs> of course, I would never do something so unoriginal. And then a few months ago, the GTX 1650 took the spot. When I sat down to work on this video, I was expecting to make a video about the GTX 1650. Look, I have one right here. I'll, I'll spruce up and ready to go. Imagine by surprise when I learned that this isn't the top GPU anymore. We have a new most popular GPU, the RTX 3060. And, and man, look how far ahead it is. It's up a whopping 10% of the share of the GPUs out there. Th that might sound small, just 10%, but it's actually a massive figure. Uh, consider how many different GPUs there are out there. The fact that in one month, this single GPU shot to the top and outpaced all the other top GPUs, even the previous top GPUs by such a big percentage is worth paying attention to. The RTX 3060, it's the GPU of the people. And with good reason, it plays all the modern games. It offers great value in terms of the performance that you get for the price. It's decked out with all the important RTX features, including ray tracing, DLSS, all, all that good stuff. But, but most importantly, it has a whopping 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Yeah, considering how VRAM heavy games are getting, the fact that we get 12 gigabytes on a, a low to mid-range GPU is kind of nuts. Even its bigger brother, the RTX 3060 Ti, doesn't have 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Even the 3070 doesn't have 12 gigabytes. Now with the VRAM requirements of the latest games, it's actually making 8 gigabyte GPUs look like they might not stay as relevant for as long as we'd hoped. But what kind of gaming experience are the masses getting with this super popular GPU? Is it enough to handle games at maxed out ultra settings? Does it deserve its crowd? Or is it just another so-so GPU that people are using because it's cheap and plentiful? Well, I can't answer that with this thing sitting on my desk, can I? It's, it's fun to play with as a, an object, but it's probably a lot funner to actually game on. So let's game on it, shall we? I'm running this GPU in my main PC with a Ryzen 9 5950X, Asus ROG X570 Tough Motherboard, 64 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3600 MHz, and I'm running the games and the system off an NVMe SSD. Full PC parts listed in the description below. Starting off, as always, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In one of my recent videos, I had someone say, Why are you still testing Shadow of the Tomb Raider? That game's old now. I banned him. Uh, until we get a new Tomb Raider game, this one is staying. There is no replacement for Laura. I'm running at 1080p native with ultra settings, including ultra ray tracing. And I got an average of 64 FPS with 46 FPS 1% lows. This is actually a great result, considering that we're running with ultra ray tracing. The RTX 3060 is about as powerful as a 2060 Super, but when you're talking about ray tracing, it compares to an RTX 2080. It's, it, it's actually kind of crazy to be seeing how well 
call this game runs on unmodern low-end hardware. Consider how demanding it was when it came out. I mean, now a, a 60 class GPU can get over 60 FPS with ultra ray tracing. Uh, things have come a very long way in a short time. In Uncharted Legacy of Thieves, I was running at 1080p with quality DLSS, maxed out ultra settings, and I got an average of 89 FPS, with the 1% lows at 71 FPS. It was super smooth, you guys. Probably because of DLSS, to be honest. I pretty much always turn on DLSS when I get the option, but if you wanted to aim for a 60 FPS experience, you'd be able to get away with turning it off. This is a freaking awesome looking game. The area that I'm in right here isn't great for doing a benchmark run. It's just where I am in this, this story. I'm going to try and find a new area of the game that'll work better in the future, but this should give you a rough idea of what kind of a performance that you could expect. In Far Cry 6, I was able to run a 1080p native ultra quality with ray traced shadows and reflections. So basically everything maxed at 1080p and I got 71 FPS on average with 52 FPS 1% lows. It's doing really great here. It's a, it's a great experience with these settings. It should be clear that this card is a freaking monster at 1080p. But if you have a 1440p monitor, you, you'd be able to use this if you made liberal use of DLSS and lower the settings down to, to high or medium. And without ray tracing, I bet you'd be even fine to run lots of these games at 4K. I didn't test multiple resolutions today because today is all about what people are actually using. And according to the survey, the vast majority of gamers are playing at 1080p. So that's what we're going to do today. The people have spoken. On to sub Doom. Eternal. Uh, we're running at 1080p with ultra settings and ray tracing enabled with quality DLSS. And we're getting a buttery smooth 163 FPS average with 121 FPS 1% 1 lows. I probably could have gone without DLSS. To be honest, uh, my monitor here is a 100 hertz monitor, so it's pointless to go for more than that. However, if you had a high refresh rate monitor, like a, a 240 hertz monitor, then you could still use this GPU. You just have to go down to, to medium settings and disable ray tracing. And that'll be highly dependent on your CPU, obviously. I'm just trying to make the point that uh, one of the strengths of the 3060 is its versatility. You can go with ultra settings and ray tracing at 1080p, lower those settings to get more FPS, use DLSS if you want to go up to 1440p or 4K. I suspect that's one of the reasons that this GPU is so popular. It, it can do so much. And of course, we need to test out Cyberjunk 2077. This game came out over two years ago and it was a mess back then, but it's improved a lot and now it runs pretty good on a, a wide variety of hardware. Although it's still one of those famously demanding games though, especially with ray tracing. Speaking of which, I, I didn't bother with ray tracing here. I'm running with the high settings, quality DLSS, no ray tracing, and I got an average of 79 FPS with 49 FPS 1% lows. This is great. I mean, it's an FPS game that I usually play with a mouse and keyboard, so I'm not going to enjoy it if it's less than like 60 FPS. So it's, it's not worth messing with ray tracing on a 3060. Not in this game, in my opinion. Let's check out some Witcher 3. Next gen Witcher 3. It's, it's like last gen, but with current gen graphics, so we call it next gen. That, that's how naming works, right? This is the DX12 version, and I'm running at high settings with quality DLSS, no ray tracing, and I'm at 85 FPS on average with 66 FPS 1% lows. This is an older game, but this new remastered version is a lot more demanding. It's freaking beautiful. It's one of my favorite games, and I love the update, but you really need some powerful hardware to get it running amazing. I have a 4070 Ti, and even there I have to make sacrifices. But the good news is that the game looks amazing at modest settings, even without ray tracing. In Elden Ring, I'm running at 1080p native with maxed out settings. This game has a 60 FPS cap, so it's pointless to try to get the performance over that. I cranked the graphical settings up, but I couldn't get 60 FPS with ray tracing enabled, even low ray tracing. So I disabled that and I'm, I'm stuck at 60 FPS. Usually with third person action games, especially games that I played with a controller, I, I don't mind if they're sub 60 FPS by a little bit, but this game game doesn't feel good to me if I'm below 60 FPS at all for whatever reason. I play better when I'm at 60 FPS. Oh hey, uh, speaking of playing better, check this out. <laughs> That's right baby, I beat Ag Heal for the first time on camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty badass, I know. You don't have to tell me, I know. On to some God of War. 
this game is running here at 1080p with quality DLSS, ultra maxed out settings, and I got 81 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 55 FPS. It's a, a really great experience, although I, I don't love the DLSS implementation in this game, to be honest. There's something about the, this game engine that doesn't lend itself well to upscaling. I would definitely play this at 60 FPS uh, without DLSS if I was on a 60 Hz modded. But ultimately, I take the FPS trade-off. Some games you, you really can't notice the DLSS at all, but this isn't one of them. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's still freaking amazing looking. It's just that the, the DLSS is is actually noticeable here for whatever reason. So you might consider running without it, maybe at lower settings if you're sensitive to upscaling artifacts. And of course we gotta test out GTA 5, and I went all out here. I maxed out everything, including the ultra settings like high res shadows and extended distance scaling, which is way more demanding than running without these settings. And I got 135 FPS on average with 85 FPS 1% lows. Now, this game is super well optimized. If you turned off those advanced settings and went down to like high settings, you'd be well over 200 FPS, no question. Again, it's pointless for me, but if you have a, a super high refresh rate monitor, or if you play GTA Online, and you want to be more competitive, then lower those settings down and you can get this running pretty much however you want. And finally, we have Metro Exodus Enhanced. This game requires a GPU that can do ray tracing. You literally can't run the game without it. It's like the only game that actually does this, as far as I know. I remember trying to play this on the 3050 and it wasn't great there, but here on the 3060, it's not even breaking a sweat. We're running at 1080p, quality DLSS, and all the settings maxed out at ultra, including ray tracing, and we got 71 FPS on average with 45 FPS 1% lows. I don't know what's going on here, why this game is running so well on this GPU. I, I don't remember it running this well in the past, but hey, I'm, I'm not going to complain. This game is truly a graphical showcase game. A game that represents the future of gaming when ray tracing is a given. And we're like there with the 3060. It can handle this no problem, even at ultra settings. That's a pretty good sign, I think, that this GPU will have serious longevity for a while. So I'm not one to try to fit in. I've accepted that I'm going to be a bit of a, an outcast, a bit, a bit on the fringe, out there with the freaks and the weirdos. Maybe you're out there with me. But when it comes to GPUs, buying what everyone else is using is usually a pretty good way to get a, a great gaming experience. The GTX 1060 was the top of the charts with good reason. That GPU held on for a very long time because it played new games for a very long time. The GTX 1650 is also great. It had its brief time at the top of the chart, but the new king of the hardware chart, the RTX 3060, in my opinion, will be a solid choice for years to come. It's sort of cheap now. You, you can pick these up for MSRP and find them on the used market, and they'll only get cheaper moving forward. Nvidia and AMD are ignoring the low end of the GPU market right now. So this is still among the best choices that you can make at this price point. And the fact that we get a whopping 12 gigabytes of VRAM means that this GPU will stay relevant for a lot longer than most GPUs in its price range. I have a hard time imagining that anything else that we have today will take its spot at the top of the charts. Not for a while. We'll see what new 60 class GPUs look like in the years to come, but unless something totally unexpected comes along, I think that this GPU is going to be a really hard one to top. I'll include a few links to some good versions of this 3060 that I recommend in the description below if you want to pick one up. And that brings us to the end. How many of you guys are rocking an RTX 3060? I bet quite a few of you. Do you see any other GPUs taking its crowd? The RX 6600 XT, maybe? Or the new low-end offerings from AMD and NVIDIA due out later this year? I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or don't if you didn't. Stop by my Discord server if you do that sort of thing. Link in the description below. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.